of quick, precise movements like birds, but they'd be huge. Quetzalcoatlus lives by its own rules. Most meat eaters keep their distance from the hatchlings of an apex predator, but not this reptile. There probably weren't many animals in the Cretaceous that would dare to try to grab a baby Tyrannosaurus rex. A Quetzalcoatlus could probably manage it. These big pterosaurs like Quetzalcoatlus were probably eating baby dinosaurs right and left. And then when they want to, boom, they push down, they spring into the air, and they flap away. For Quetzalcoatlus, the key to snapping up baby dinosaurs is a quick getaway. But escape is no problem for a reptile that can pull two and a half Gs on takeoff, reaching 30 miles per hour in less than a second. If you're a Quetzalcoatlus and you live in a land full of Tyrannosaurs in the latest Cretaceous, you need to take off in a hurry sometimes. Quetzalcoatlus is unlike any other dinosaur in the Cretaceous. Speed, agility, and sophisticated biology allow it to survive for millions of years in a brutal environment. But this is a world inhabited by the most advanced predators nature has ever produced. Even prehistoric killers like Deinonychus and Tyrannosaurus rex know that no matter how many tools they have at the ready, attacking plant eaters is risky business. Every hunt might be your last. the mighty carnivores of the Cretaceous. They rule a dangerous world. But being a super predator like Tyrannosaurus rex is no easy job. Just surviving to adulthood is a major feat. One that takes a decade or more of killing and eating some of the meanest creatures that walk the earth. The hardest role in the ecosystem is top predator. Most of the time, you are almost starving. A carnivore knows that no prey animal goes down easily. Herbivores fight like their lives depend on it. Because they do. These are animals that have defenses. Ankylosaurus is a slow lumbering plant eater. Its low slung body is covered in bony plates, and its tail packs a punch. And Kylosaurus itself has this huge mass of bone on the end of its tail. And there's no leg bone of Tyrannosaurus that could withstand it. Predators of the Cretaceous are gigantic by our standard. Yet in stature, they're clearly outclassed by plant eaters. Carnivores, though, have one significant advantage. Bigger brains. The armored dinosaurs in general and Ankylosaurus is no exception here. We're not bright dinosaurs. Probably one of the dumbest dinosaurs that ever lived. Their brains are really small for the size of their heads and their bodies. With prey this dumb, predators don't need to be geniuses. Ultimately, you really only need to be as smart or smarter than the animals that you're around. Seven tons of Tyrannosaurus rex can do a lot of damage but a little extra brain can make a lot of difference. Well, T-Rex brain was actually a bit larger than a banana. <laughs> T-Rex brain is just a thousandth of its body size. That's 20 times less brain power than humans. Yet, it's significantly larger than those of its plant eater prey. What we see in T-Rex is an advance to its cognitive capabilities were greater, its ability to probably solve problems and deal with wrinkles in its environment. Other carnivores are even more dependent on cognitive thought. For protection, Deinonychus relies primarily on its brain. The brain structure of Deinonychus and his relatives is really quite remarkable. Pound for pound, Deinonychus has one of the largest brains in the dinosaur kingdom. That brain power is harnessed to achieve one goal. This was an animal that needed some brain power to know how to attack, when to attack, what parts of the prey animal to attack.
The wily part of the brain is the cerebrum, and Deinonychus has a big one. It analyzes information from all over the body, and unlike the unsophisticated brains of its prey, it makes decisions. Deinonychus can also do something no other predator in its day could do, call in reinforcements. And what we can see with Deinonychus in its brain structure is that potentially it has the capacity to pull off cooperative hunting. Deinonychus is clever. Clever enough to deal with another highly developed creature. A second Deinonychus. Hunting together requires an ability to communicate as well as share tactics and strategy. This is something only made possible by a large brain. This is an animal that might have actually had some cleverness to it. Some, an animal that might have actually been able to uh, solve problems. The ability to work cooperatively is the ability to stay alive. Deinonychus has to keep one step ahead of its prey, anticipating trouble before it happens. Living as a hunter was not the easy life. The irony for many predators is they're very concerned about injuring themselves. Even the toughest, most well-armed man-eaters regularly come face to face with prey that can kill them. Whether you have the jaws of Tyrannosaurus Rex or are armed to the teeth like a raptor, every hunt just might be your last. The thing about predation is it's very dangerous both for the prey and for the predator. There are many specimens that have puncture wounds and open sores when they die. An injury, even a minor one, can stop a predator from hunting. A virtual guarantee of death by starvation. The life of a carnivore was so hard that they were beat up. They are all beat to hell before they became a fossil. It's not like Africa or Asia today, where you have lots of smaller animals and there's one or two big things like elephants or rhinos. We're talking about an entire landscape that's filled with herds of multi-ton herbivores. For carnivores today, just as during the Cretaceous, staying alive is tough, very tough. If we look at lives of, of, of living predators today, they're pretty short lives. Each individual life does not span its potential. Um, whenever they become older and weaker, they're more susceptible to injury. And every time you hunt, you're putting your life on the line. In the world of dinosaurs, predators stop at nothing to survive. They use every tool in their arsenal brains, eagle eyes, stealth flight, super hearing, and advanced sense of smell. But in the end, those who live by the claw sometimes die by the 